Namaste everyone and welcome. Thank you very much for joining me for this Anchor the Light session. Now, before we start, let's ask for divine blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Divine Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, to my teacher, Master Tua Hoksui, Maha Gujmailing, we humbly invoke for divine light, divine love, divine guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. We thank you in full faith. So it is. All right. So, you know, one of the things that we always want to do is share some insights with you. Uh, in addition to the meditation that we're doing uh, week after week to bring down a lot of spiritual energy to bless Mother Earth. And our spiritual brothers and sisters in the Jewish tradition uh, just observed Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. So I'd just like to expand on that, on the esoteric viewpoint, on how that relates to what we know about the spiritual self and the soul. You know, it's the Day of Atonement. And this is a special day that... Um, there's fasting, there's prayer, there's asking for God's forgiveness. You know, a lot of it is to reconnect with God again, okay? Now, first of all, you ask yourself a simple question. What is sin in the spiritual tradition? What does sin mean? You know, because every tradition in um, anything from Christianity to Judaism, you know, and other traditions, so they talk about sin is what separates us from God. And in order to understand that, you have to first understand what is the nature of our spiritual being, our spiritual connection. So the easiest way to understand it is the soul is a being of pure energy and light. We've talked about this in previous session. So the soul is a being of pure energy light, um, and light. The soul is pure, but not yet perfect. So in order to learn lessons, the higher soul has to put a portion of itself into human suits. Okay, that's why I designated it as higher soul. The way my teacher explained this, that's why you have a higher soul and lower soul. We'll go in more detail. So the higher soul, in order to learn lessons, had to kind of put on a physical shell in order to function the physical world. Has to put on an emotional shell to function the emotional world, or be able to feel feelings, and put on a mental shell in order to think, analyze, process data, teach and share with other people, okay? So the easiest way to understand it is the higher soul, in order to learn lessons, basically, just imagine my entire body is the higher soul, in order to learn lessons, uh, the higher soul put a portion of itself, symbolized by my hand, inside the physical, emotional, and mental vehicle or shell. Make sense? Now, the physical, emotional, mental bodies, if you will, that's what they are traditionally called, have their own tendencies, all right? For example, your physical body, if you let your body have whatever it wants, it wants something that's pleasurable. Everything from food to sex to sleep to anything that's pleasurable, that's what the physical body wants. And the emotional body, the emotions, there's no such thing as a calm emotion. We <laughs> call that an oxymoron, a contradiction in terms. So the emotions constantly want to experience highs and lows. So when you let your emotions completely run your life without directing it, you know, one day you'll be happy, the next day you'll be sad, you know, it just goes like that, right? You've ever met anyone who's run purely by their emotion, one day they love the heck out of you, and then the next day they can't stand you, right? You know, very, very, that's the nature of the emotions. And when things are quiet, there's no fight, no argument, it's like, that's boring. <laughs> you get my point? Because the emotions run on what? on lots of motion, it creates a lot of motion. But channeled properly, it can do a lot of great things. Okay, next. The mental body, the mental vehicle. It is the nature of the mind to constantly want to analyze, break things down, understand it, you know, tear it apart again, and try to put it together, and try to synthesize that information. That's what you call thinking. So if you let your mind, your mental faculty, do whatever it wants, guess what it wants to do? It wants to think, Think of this, think of that, analyze this, because at some point, there's so much thoughts, there's what you call monkey mind. It just jumps all over the place, and there's no stillness, no peace, no calmness. Okay? Now, let's put the whole thing together. So, all the tendencies put together by the body of the body, the emotions and the thoughts, that's what you call your lower nature. Okay? To put it in a very, very simple terms, in simple terms, 
your basic chakra at the base of your spine, which is in charge of your physical body, physical movement, right? If you let your basic chakra run your life, basically, basically, the basic chakra is in charge of survival, in charge of the ability to make money and to be productive. So, my question to you is this. What's stopping that part of you to go out and make money, cheat, lie, steal, and kill just to be successful? You go, I won't do that. Who's the I? Exactly the point. So, the raw tendencies of the body, the emotions, and the thoughts are what you call your lower nature. So when the incarnated soul, or the lower soul, that is enveloped and let's just say encased in the physical, emotional, mental shell, when the physical, emotional, mental tendencies completely run the, sh the, the tendencies of the soul, guess what happens? The incarnated soul, symbolized with my hand, start to enjoy a lot of these tendencies then it starts having emotional amnesia, mental amnesia, physical amnesia. In other words, it now gets so entrenched or entangled by the desires of the body, the emotions and the thoughts, it forgets it's just part of a bigger whole. And so it goes out, hurts people, uh, cheats people, do something not, not good, unwholesome, so because of that, as it gives in to the tendencies of the lower ten of the physical, emotional, mental vehicles, it detaches itself from the higher soul. Now, when I say detach, I'm not talking about cutting it off. In other words, its consciousness and awareness is now purely on satisfying, you know, what the body wants, what the emotions want, what the mind wants. And that separation, as it hurts people, is what you call sin. So, in many spiritual teachings, they say sin is actually the ignorance of the soul of its true nature. But you, you can't stop there because ignorance of the soul, what's wrong with being not knowing anything? It's what the soul will do with the body, the emotions, the thoughts when they experience in that stupidity, <laughs> ignorance. So it starts to hurt people, re not realizing that we're all interconnected, that there's the law of karma, make sense? It starts to be emotionally upset, depressed, you know, emotionally hurt people, they're envious, uh, whatever else, you know, they use their mind to scheme how to make money by hurting people, stealing, killing, you get the idea? So because of that, because of that ignorance of one's true nature, that they are basically the soul, part of the higher soul, a being of light, they indulge in these things and people get hurt, they generate negative karma, that's what you call sin. So I'm sharing this with you, make it universal regardless of your religion. Make sense? Now, so the question is, why is it that in Yom Kippur, they, in the people are instructed to fast, to do prayer, and ask for forgiveness? Okay, I'm sure they're doing a lot more other stuff. I'm just putting a few things to kind of make it connect with what, <laughs> what we're doing, okay? So, it's something like this. I know a lot of you have fasted, right? Most of you fasting for detoxing, for losing weight, right? Or essentially, in the deepest sense, you fast to tell the body who's boss. You know, what do you mean? Again, one of the major tendencies, the main tendencies of the body is to want to eat, right? <laughs> Feed your face. So, in this time, in Yom Kippur, actually not just in Yom Kippur, in many other traditions, when people fast for spiritual reasons, the deeper meaning of spiritual of uh, fasting is not so, oh, I sacrifice the food that I want, and so on and so on for God. That's for, let's just say, general public understanding. For people in the spiritual path who know the deeper teachings, guess what it is? To tell the body who's boss. The body, its tendencies, remember, talk about wants to eat at a certain time, wants to eat things that's not good for it, in general, right? You have to tell the body, no, 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 that's not healthy for you. Or when it says, okay, today is the day of the Sabbath. Today is uh, the day of, I don't know, 
I'm going to do intense meditation today, so I don't want the body to be too full to meditate. But in reality, what you're doing is you're telling body, telling body, okay, you behave. I know you want to eat, but I'm going to do things that are beyond what the body wants. Make sense? So the purpose of fasting is to tell the body who's boss. So if the soul, if the incarnate soul, the lower soul is wrapped up in the physical body and so entangled with what the body wants by saying, nope, you're not eating today or tomorrow or whatever, the body will complain, right? All of us have tried. It's like, oh, no, you're okay. feeling weak, feeling this. Feeling... Unless, of course, there's a medical reason. But assuming that there's no medical uh, reason for it, then it's basically the body rebelling. So at first, it's difficult until what happens? The body learns like, okay, I'm not going to get anywhere. Okay, I'll behave. Right? That's fasting. It's to tell the body who's boss. Now, prayer. Prayer, what do you do when you're praying? Most of us, we close our eyes, you know, hand position, whatever position. But what are you doing is you're going beyond the body, the emotions, and the thoughts. And in your consciousness, you're connecting to something higher. Why higher? Here's what you're doing when you pray or you meditate. You're temporarily removing the influence of the body, the emotions, and the thoughts. So you are reconnecting to who you really are, your spirit, yourself. And so as you pray to God, God is spirit, pure energy. Make sense? So as you're praying... You know, you kind of calm your mind, your emotions, make sure the room is not, not noisy. You're trying to really go within. So what are you doing? At that point, you're removing the influence of the body, the emotions, and the thoughts to just put your attention, even for just a few minutes, on your spiritual nature, your spiritual connection. Make sense? Now, let's take it one step further. Now, a lot of you might have remembered one of the biblical stories the disciples came over to the Lord Jesus and said, you know, how come we could not cast out these demons? Remember that? The Lord Jesus says, this can only be, these demons can only be cast out through prayer and fasting. Now you ask yourself a simple question. What does fasting have to do with casting out demons? Prayer, and said prayer, bring down spiritual energy, you know, get rid of these, these <laughs> negative energy beings. But what does fasting do? It goes back to the same thing. When the disciple wants to cast out these demons, basically these are lower energy beings, right? In order to get rid of them, they have to be able to control their body, their emotions, and thoughts. Otherwise, these beings will tempt them. So by prayer, they're reconnecting, right? By fasting, they'll tell the body, the emotions, thoughts, who's boss? So they regain the spiritual control and mastery that gives them the power number one so they won't be controlled by these lower entities and number two so they can kick them out are we making any sense so i'm sharing this with you because you know many different traditions everything from buddhism hinduism judaism islam all these different traditions have many different practices but when all is said and done the path and the objective are going along the same lines. The path might be slightly different, but the objective is first oneness with the higher soul and oneness with all the great spiritual teachers, high beings, your guides, and oneness with God. But the first stop is the higher soul. So when the body, the emotions and thoughts are controlling the lower soul, guess what happens? We commit sin. In other words, we give into the entanglement, entanglements, the tendencies of these different bodies, and we temporarily forget who we really are. So, Yom Kippur, when you ask for forgiveness, you pray. You're realizing your mistake. You're realizing that I gave into the body. I gave into the emotions. I gave into these bad thoughts. Lord God, forgive me. I've learned my lesson. Right? Prayer and asking forgiveness. And to tell the body who's was, look. I'm in charge of you. You're not eating. You're not even drinking water. Ooh, you know, whatever other traditions uh, are involved. Make sense? So it's interesting. It's a day of atonement. Now, if you break it down, atonement is A-T, 
at O N E one meant. It's the day of becoming one again with your higher soul and one with God. At one meant. At one meant. Some of you going, oh. Amazing, isn't it? You see, as King Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. The teachings are here. They're in every tradition. You just need eyes to see. And that's why one of the reasons why I'm so grateful to my teacher is because learning with him, you know, over 20 years, those were 20 super jam-packed years. And things like this that he shared just blows my mind. And I hope that uh, I have been able to share those deeper teachings with you. So next time you see your Jewish brothers and sisters and they, they're... Um, you know, observing Yom Kippur, then you understand why they're doing it. Make sense? Now, you don't have to be Jewish to practice those principles of doing what? Controlling the body, the emotions, and thoughts, and connecting back to your higher self, connecting back with God. Be at one meant. Atonement. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah, and I was reading ago. Wow. So it goes back to became, becoming one with your higher soul. Now, just to kind of finish it off. So back to that um, example earlier. If your basic chakra is in charge of being productive, making money, you know, being successful, what's stopping you from having all of those as you hurt people? You said, well, I'm not going to let it. The I is the spiritual self. So when the higher soul is able to reach down to the crown and control the basic chakra, you'll say, okay, you basic chakra, you can make, go and make money, make lots of it if you want, but you can do it only without hurting, one, hurting anyone and doing it ethically. Make sense? Same thing with the sex chakra and whatever other chakras because these different chakras are connected with your different bodies. So each of them have their own tendencies. Does that make sense? So when we do these meditation spiritual practice, just going to tie it in. When we do the Anchor the Light meditation, you know, a lot of you have been commenting, yeah, I notice I'm calmer, I'm more in control, uh, I have more clarity. All of those are manifestations of the higher soul being able to have a stronger at one with the incarnated soul and the incarnated soul becoming more at one with the higher soul. By the way, when this higher and lower soul are fully at one, that's what you call yoga union. You go, oh. Simple? Exactly. When I was listening to my teacher talk about these things, blew my mind. I go, are you serious? Is that simple? You see, most people think you have to make things really complicated so that you can spiritually develop. It's the simple things that have power because you're not wasting time on unnecessary things, just the key ingredients. Make sense? Now, that said, um, so every time we do our meditation, we're reconnecting with our higher soul. And we first do that with what? I am affirmation, okay? Spacing out with all this energy. So the I am affirmation, what are you doing? I am the soul. I'm not the body, not the emotion, not the thoughts. I am the spiritual self, right? I am the soul. I'm a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. Now, a lot of you have joined me from before. We talk about this. Since you're a being of divine intelligence, that spiritual being, the higher soul, is able to control the mind. I'm a being of divine love. That higher soul, that being of divine love, is able to control the emotions. I'm a being of divine power. That aspect of power or will controls the body. Because, you know, when you're moving your body, you don't think. You don't feel. You just say, move your arm. I move my arm. You didn't say, oh, I want to feel my arm and move it. No, you just moved it. You didn't have to think so hard. Oh, you want me to think, move my arm? Okay. It's an act of will. So, the body, the emotions, and thoughts have their own tendencies. But when you connect with your higher soul, the higher soul reaches down, the will aspect of the higher soul controls the body, 
the love aspect of the higher soul, the, the divine love aspect of the higher soul controls the emotions. The divine intelligence aspect of the higher soul controls the mind or the mental faculty. That's why we always start with the I am affirmation. Connect first. Yeah? Okay. Put your hands on your heart. Let's go. I am that I am. Focus on your crown. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotion. I'm not the thoughts. I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. I am that. The soul. I'm connected in one, always been one, with my higher soul. I'm connected in one with the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God. I am one with God. I am one with all. There is only oneness. I am that. Just be still. Just maintain your stillness and awareness. Just keep your awareness on your crown. And if it drifts above the crown, just allow it to happen on its own. Listen to my voice. You're not the body, you're not the emotion, you're not the thoughts. You are the soul. You are a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. You are connected in one to your higher soul. You are connected in one with the divine spirit in you. You are a child of God. You are one with God. You are one with all. It is. Be still. Allow the higher soul, the real you, to reach down, down, and control all your chakras. Control your body, your emotions, your thoughts. Control your entire being. So it is. Just be still. Maintain your stillness and awareness. Simultaneously, raise your hands in blessing. Be aware of your heart. Say, our hearts are one. Be aware of your crown. Say, our crowns are one. There is only oneness. Now, be aware of your heart and your hands. Project lots of love to the entire earth. We're doing the meditation twin hearts as taught to us by my teacher, Grand Master Tua Hok Sui. Project lots of love from your heart through your hands to the earth. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, let me sow love. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. Let's think of all the people going through difficult times right now. Some of them are sick. Some of them are financially not doing well. Some of them have, rela- some of them have relationship issues. May all of them be blessed with compassionate, purifying light and soothing, healing energy. May their lives turn around. Bless them with hope and with faith in a better life. So be it. Where there is darkness, let me sow spiritual light. Darkness is the ignorance of one's true nature, a being of spiritual light. Bless every person, every being with spiritual light and illumination, enlightenment. 
and where this sadness let me so tremendous amount of joy so be it just continue blessing the earth from your heart through your hands now be aware of your heart take a deep breath go up to your crown and exhale One more time, be aware of your heart, inhale. Go to your crown, exhale. Be aware of your heart, inhale. Go to your crown, exhale. And stay there. Now be aware of your crown, imagine beautiful golden light from your crown flowing down through your hands the entire earth. Flood your family with golden light, your friends, your loved ones. Bless everyone with beautiful golden light. From the heart of God, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with loving kindness, with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. Let all beings be blessed, so be it. May all be blessed. You might feel a tingling or a pressure in your crown and also your hands, just allow it to happen. That's all the divine energy trying to pass through you. So be it. Now be aware of your heart, be aware of your crown, take a deep breath. Exhale, imagine golden light pouring down to the ground. Again, be aware of your heart, your crown, take a deep breath. Imagine the golden light pouring out to the waters, the land, the people, the air. Just saturate the entire earth with golden light. From the center of the heart of God, may every person, every being, in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, let all beings in every dimension be blessed with unconditional love and kindness. Let all be blessed with inner peace and inner healing. Let all be blessed with understanding, with harmony, with goodwill, and the willingness to do good. So be it. So be it. Continue flooding your family with good health, with happiness, with prosperity and abundance, and spirituality. So be it. Let these blessings spread throughout the entire earth now. Just be still and just let the energy keep flowing through us. Just keep repeating, our hearts are one, our crowns are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. And in this oneness, we are grateful to be instruments of bringing blessings of love, light, and healing to the entire earth. Now, so be it. Keep blessing the earth, so be it. May all be blessed. Now lower your hands on your lap. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Now imagine a beautiful golden flame floating a few inches above your head. Now just be aware of the love within your heart. Send a stream of love from your heart up, up to the crown and into that golden light. And stay there. And listen. Om. Om. Just drift deeper and deeper into that golden light. Be 
still. Just sit straight and just let go. Let the energy go. Let the energy go where it needs to. Now. Just listen. Means I am. Connect with I am within you now. Just let go. Gently, slowly, come back to your body. Gently move your fingers, move your toes. Gently and slowly come back. Raise your hands again. Again, imagine people you love, visualize them in front of you. Be aware of your heart and your hands. Flood them with good health, with happiness, with prosperity and spirituality. So be it. Fill them with more golden light and just visualize their life getting even better. So be it. Bless your job, your career with success, with progress and advancement. See yourself super successful. So be it. Now be aware of your feet, your hands, and the base of your spine. Imagine beautiful golden light pouring down from these areas to the entire earth below us. Repeat after me. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it, so be it, and so it is. Okay, let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers. Thank you. Personally, to my teacher, Master Chokok Sui Mahaguji Main, thank you. In full faith, so it is. All right, let me slowly open your eyes. The meditation was short, but you notice it was intense. You know why? Well, on top of the special sauce. <laughs> See, when you have that realization, that's why it's so important to understand. When you have that realization, oh, when I meditate, this is what happened. That realization creates certainty. Certainty creates connection. So when you're certain, yeah, when I do this, I'm connecting with my higher soul. So when you meditate, that spiritual core just opens up like that. So much spiritual energy come down. So even though the meditation was only like mm, maybe 15 minutes the most, a lot of you went very deep. In fact, I had to pull myself back in the body because at some point I was going, <laughs> it's gone, man. All right. So a few things, just a quick announcement. Uh, this coming Thursday, is full moon meditation, okay? It's gonna be 7 p.m. I think that's 7.30 India time. I know people always ask. It's easy, if you're in California, just add 30 minutes and flip it over, <laughs> okay? The rest of the world, uh, in Asia, you know, you look at, the, come on, you guys. You know, it still blows my mind. I look at the comments, what time is it in this country? The fact that you can watch it on the internet, you can find out at this time, what time is it in my country, right? So anyway, come on. I know you, can, you guys can do this. You're a being of divine intelligence. Divine power to move your fingers to do it. <laughs> Go check it out. I can't possibly put all the time zones on this thing, okay? So anyway, it's 7 p.m. California time. And um, the question is, are you a mystic or you're a spiritual scientist? 
You know, some people, they're very mystical. Oh, I see light. I see so much energy. I see the angels. Okay, the mystics are known to be the lovers of God. Okay, then the spiritual scientists are the one. Okay, let's try to understand this. What are the mechanisms involved in connecting to your higher soul? Okay, what's the principle? How do you do it? So these are the scientists, right? So the question is, which one are you? And do you have to be just one? Okay, we'll break it down uh, this coming Thursday. You know, so that way you have a deeper understanding. Again, like we said a few minutes ago, when you have certainty in knowing what the heck you're doing, the energy pours like a waterfall. All right? So we'll see you this Thursday. Anyway, we'll put uh, another uh, thing on Instagram, Facebook, and email and all that to just remind you. Okay? Now, one thing about the full moon meditation, the ones who are new, there's so much energy pouring down during the full moon, we want to take advantage of it. You know, for ordinary people who are not yet on the spiritual path, it's a time of crisis. That's what the Tibetan teacher, Holy Master Dual Kul said. For ordinary people, it's a time of crisis. For people on the spiritual path, it's a time of opportunity. Why crisis? It's like fertilizer. You throw fertilizer on the ground, the, the, <laughs> the weeds, flowers, fruits, everything grows, right? It magnifies everything. So, since people are stressed out, guess what? During the full moon, they go, ah, they go really go crazy. <laughs> because everything gets magnified, right? They call it werewolf syndrome. Now, in your case, you know, as you understand this, we go, oh, there's a lot of energy coming down. Okay, I'm going to use that energy first to purify a lot of the stuff I have difficulty releasing. Because, you know, instead of a faucet, I'm now water, under waterfall. I can use that to flush things out. Then, you can use the same energy to aim it at the good qualities you want to increase. Remember? It's a magnifying effect. Then, the third thing is, especially the ones who are new, every full moon... You know, we have you bring out all your projects, things that you want to succeed in. Have you write it all down before, before, not during. And then during meditation, we're going to bring in a lot of spiritual energy. Afterwards, we're going to project lots of light, lots of energy to these projects. You know, anything from getting a better job, improving your health, healing energy, improving your relationships, relationships whatever it is. You know, in order for anything to, to be successful in life, it needs energy, it needs fuel. So, you know, like in India, a lot of students, they go to the teacher, oh, Guruji, please bless me for this, 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 and this. So the teacher says, yes, okay, you are blessed. So when the teacher blesses, what does that mean? Energy is poured into, your li- into their life. Make sense? So what we do during the full moon is we proactively do this to the specific areas in our life that we want to be what? <coughs> Supercharge. So write it down, whatever it is. And then at some point after the meditation, I'll say, okay, bring out your project. So you have it in front of you. you know, we'll affirm oneness. Uh, oneness so that it's a big, gigantic, gigantic um, tunnel of light, of energy. And then we just pour it into our projects. And we do that month after month. Could you imagine? That's why people say, yeah, you know, I know since I've been doing meditation and doing the blessing, my life has improved. Well, part of it is being purified, right? Removing this negative energy. Number two is increasing your spiritual awareness. So... We do less stupid things, and we have a tendency to do good things. And number three, with all that energy, we bless, we bless, we bless. You energize these projects, the things that you want. They have more energy to manifest. And actually, there's a fourth reason. Every time we meditate, we bless the earth. We bless every person, every being. We bless people in need. Well, guess what? There's this cosmic boomerang called the law of karma. As you give blessing, blessings come back to you multiplied because there's this law of attraction thingy that as that energy is coming back to you it's attracting remember law of attraction like qualities attract it's attracting the similar vibrations so if you keep blessing others as their life improve that karmic boomerang comes back to you you're blessed with that times 10 times 100 who knows does that make sense so all these we're doing strategically okay i think that's it and um, just a reminder for some of you, if you've been asking about this, so I'll post it again. You know, the part of the higher soul, the incarnate soul we're teaching again, it's based on the book and the class taught by my teacher, Achieving Oneness with the Higher Soul. Now you have a better understanding. Achieving Oneness. In other words, this oneness, oftentimes as we give into the lower nature, we lose that connection temporarily. Right? That's why you need atonement, at one minute. Ta-da! Remember? Okay, so those are the dates. Um, 
I know some of you are asking, yeah, but I don't live in the U.S., you know, I visited. If you have a U.S. address, you can register. Okay, I didn't make the rules because uh, I'm li under license by my teacher's school to teach his classes. And at this point in time, it's just for people with a U.S. address. So that's it. I think I've done my job. So we will see you Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday morning, 10 a.m. We're back to that schedule because I'm traveling today. So Wednesday morning, 10 and then 6 p.m. California time. And then Friday is Emotion Healing Day. Emotion Healing Day. This thing just keep rolling. <laughs> we just keep doing what we need to. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. On and on and on. All right. So, Namaste, everyone. You all took care, take care. And um, I think that's it. We will see you Wednesday morning. Keep up your meditation, spiritual practice. Namaste. God bless and live super energized. Take it care.